Inside of yesterday's snapshot, 23w43a, they added all the copper and tough blocks. But hidden behind the excitement of the new blocks, there was actually a new command that I didn't cover in my main snapshot video because I didn't really understand what it done. But I've now actually done some testing and I actually now know what the command does. And today I'm going to be showing you why it's actually quite a good command. So the command is slash tick. Now when you actually do space, it has some things that you can automatically fill in. And that is freeze, query, rate, sprint step and unfreeze before i actually showcase more of the command let's quickly just talk about what a tick is a tick is basically at which the game runs it runs 20 ticks per every real life second and it basically determines when things happen so for example entities moving arrows being shot tnt being exploded everything like that works on ticks so if the ticks are increased stopped or anything like that then nothing will actually be able to happen within the world. And that is exactly what this command helps with. So for example, the first one is freeze. And basically what this does, it freezes the game completely. As you can see, this creeper is no longer moving. It is actually frozen in place. The actual sheep is also frozen. Some of the endermen's in distance. But this is not just used to freeze the game because this can be used for quite a few different things. For example, punching that creeper the creeper will now actually stay like that until I unfreeze the game because the game isn't ticking to register the hit yet. So I've now got a few other items, not just TNT. But if I was to place the TNT down right here and I was to ignite this, the TNT can't actually explode because the game isn't ticking for it to explode. So this will now stay here exactly like this until I unfreeze the game. Then a few other things we can do, throw a trident, the trident will be stuck in midair. Same with if we throw some eggs, as you can see the eggs are in midair. They do actually have quite a weird render, if you are extremely close to them they do actually de-render, but they are still there. This is the same with enderpearls, if I was to throw an enderpearl it will now be floating in midair. And the same with things like arrows. A few other things that I did actually learn, you can also have some firework rockets, which will go off as soon as we unfreeze the game. That is one good thing to note. As soon as the game is unfrozen, everything here will actually do exactly what it would normally do within the game. A few other things you can actually do, you can actually have floating blocks because the game can't actually... Where did that go? Uh, I don't actually know where that went, but the game can't actually register the blocks falling so the blocks just float in midair, as you can see, like this dragon egg. Now, one thing the game does register is you breaking blocks. Like, as you can see, I can still break blocks, but there are no particles. The particles will actually play when the game is unfrozen. So this does mean you can do certain things with this. Also, items won't actually fall. So as you can see, we can make a trail of TNT that is just floating in midair. And they also won't group up together because the game needs to tick to actually register if an item can stack together. So as you can see, we just have this trail of TNT going through the air. It can also be done with basically any item within the game. Now, if I was to quickly just stand, let's say right here, because we can actually see everything. And then I was to do the actual command slash tick and then unfreeze. That unfreezes the game. So as you can see, everything now goes off and I'll be teleported to where that enderpearl landed. So that is a way to basically freeze the game and then unfreeze it. So you can have certain situations happen when you want them to. A good example of this, back in, I would say about a year ago, there was a trend. There were some things where this skeleton was burning, so someone would go and place blocks above their head. So when the game unfroze, the skeleton would be safe. There was also ones where things like arrows were to be shot at something and someone would place blocks so the arrow didn't actually hit what they wanted it to. And that is exactly how this was done. But before, it would obviously need a mod to do that. Now, no mod is required. You can do it within the default game. The next part command is step. So now let's cover this. Step, you need the game frozen. If the game is unfrozen, the this step command won't actually work. It will tell you the game needs to be frozen for it to work. And basically what step does is it will speed up the game in a certain amount of seconds or ticks. So if I was to basically do, let's say, one tick and I enter it, as you can see, the game moves one tick forward. I can show that bestly by shooting an arrow. And then if I quickly just shoot it one tick forward, you can see the arrow moves one tick. So this is good for if you actually wanted the trail of the arrow. Or if you want, let's say, a firework to be shot up, but you want it to be more in the air. Then you can just move the game forward one tick. And as you can see, it's moved. If you want it a bit higher, you can slowly do it until it's where you want it. Let's say you actually want it a lot higher. 
you can do 10 ticks and as you can see it'll move up 10 ticks now let's say i'm happy with that i can move but if you do actually do it again everything will move as you can see why we were aligning that the actual arrow did go a lot further you can see right here so that is what step does it basically pushes the game a few ticks or seconds forward so that is basically useful for if you have a scene or something but you want it to be a few steps forward you can then actually do that just by using the command. You don't have to unfreeze and freeze the game extremely quickly. Let's quickly just cover query because this is a quite a simple one. As you can see, it will tell you how quick the game is running and if it is actually running okay or not. Because it's actually frozen, it's not running that well. So if I was to actually unfreeze the game, then I was to run that again. You can see it's now running about average. And then the next thing is sprint. Sprint basically forces the game forward. The game doesn't need to be frozen for this. This can be done even if the game is unfrozen. And basically, let's say we want to skip it one day. That is Minecraft days, not real life days. So let's sprint it forward by one day. As you can see, everything within the world is now moving extremely quickly because the game is technically forcing us forward by a day. It doesn't do it instantly. It does it over time. I think it takes about a minute, maybe two minutes for it to actually eventually work fully. But you can see this happening by the sky. The actual sun is moving extremely quickly over the sky. If we was to look around, you can see things like the pigs are moving a lot quicker than they normally would. The best thing that this can actually be used for is if you actually have yourself a farm of some kind. Let's say a mob farm. Because mobs will actually spawn a lot quicker. So you can actually see the rates of your farm. As you can see, you do get an output when it's complete. So you know it's complete. But if you was to have like a creeper farm, for example, that you wanted to test the rates of over, let's say, an hour, you can actually do that by speeding the game up. You don't have to actually sit there and wait for an hour. The reason I've jumped back into this world is because I want to show you how the actual rate can be used. So as you can see, we have a iron farm right here. If I was to do the command slash tick, and then let's do the actual uh, sprint, let's speed it up by one day. As you can see, the game is now moving extremely quickly. Meaning that we can actually see how many iron we will get within a Minecraft day. Now another thing, as you can see, I've turned on the moss farm right here. And the moss farm is actually working extremely fast because the game is actually sped up. So you can see that we can actually then test the rates of this farm to see how much it produces in a Minecraft day. Because it is running a lot quicker than it normally would. Now it's actually turning night time, we should see our first iron golem. Which you can see right there, it then falls down. Another one should then spawn once that one is killed and the actual 30 seconds is then up. So you can see another one has actually just spawned. So you can see that the actual farms are sped up by quite a bit. So you can kind of do rate checks without having to actually sit there for a whole Minecraft day just to see how much your farm produces. But that isn't all the actual command does. There is one more thing that it can actually do. And this thing that it does that I'm going to showcase now is probably my favorite. So we've actually showed freeze, query, sprint, step and unfreeze. So now the final thing is rate. Now this rate by default is 20 because that is what the game runs at. The game runs at 20 ticks per second. So changing this will change it how quick the game runs permanently until you change it back. So let's say for a while we want the game to run 10 times as quick. If I do that, as you can see, the game is now running 10 times quicker than it normally would. You can see the villagers are moving. So if you want to speed up the game just to see how quickly iron golems would spawn. So this is actually a way just to speed up the game without making it skip a certain amount of time. So before it would skip a whole day and after a day it would stop. This is to do it permanently. So this won't actually stop until I change the 200 back to either 20 or something else. Now you can have this a lot higher, but not only, as you can see that sniffer over there is actually doing it extremely quick as well. You can see it digs pretty much instantly because obviously that is something that the ticks also do. And another thing that it should do, its cooldown should not be 5 minutes or 8 minutes because it should be ticking a lot quicker. But not only can you actually speed up the game, you can actually set this to lower than 20. 20 being the default, you can actually set it to something like 10 which is half what the game runs at. And as you can see, the game is then in slow motion, including the actual player. 
as you can see i'm doing everything a lot slower now we can even go lower than this we can go to five and as you can see i'm now a lot slower again so this can also be used to make some kind of slow motion capture if you want to maybe have you sprinting at something but you want it to be in slow motion you can now actually do that as you can see and also everything within the world will also be in slow motion as you can see the sniffer is in slow motion the actual villages over there will also be in slow motion and so will all the farms now you cannot actually set this command to zero to freeze the game as you can see setting it to zero does actually give an error it cannot be less than one so one is the least you can actually do to freeze the game you can obviously just do the freeze part of the command then it's a one as you can see we are now moving extremely slowly i am holding my w key and this is how fast i'm actually going and if i actually i'll tell you when i click my punch button so i'm going to click it now you can see the actual delay between me clicking it and me actually punching because the game is extremely slow and it does also bring a sense of cinematic style where you can now do slow motions or fast motion things within the vanilla game i've actually showcased everything the command can do now i'm sure there are so many more uses and possibilities for the command it is such a good command and it's so fun to mess around with but anyway, that is where I'm going to end this video. We are going to end in slow motion just because I think it's extremely cool. So if you did enjoy this video, do leave a like and subscribe. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.